Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. Generally, like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a very, very basic worker placement game. We're going to be talking about asking for tro bills. And in this game, you'll be placing your workers out on the board to take actions that will give you resources. You'll be trading these resources in to capture tro bills, and they will give you points that will hopefully later win the game so in this video we'll be giving you a very brief overview of the rules but tell you what we do like what we don't like and we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not asking for trobils is still worth your time and bother fuck knows how many years since it was first released if you're new here subscribe to this channel hit the like button on that youtube bullshit see you after this bollocks so asking for trobils how do you play this game so asking for troubles is a very, very basic worker placement game. Your ships are your workers, and at the beginning of the game, you will get only one ship. You will have some other ships available that will be placed in the wormhole for you to purchase later. So on your turn, you'll get to choose one of two actions. The first action you can take is you can place a ship on one of the worker placement locations, right? If there's already a ship on that location, then you can bump the ship out of that location location and it will go back to its owner if you bump your own ship then it is destroyed and it goes onto the wormhole any second action that you could take is that if you've got no ships to place then you have to take back all of your ships from all the locations that they are in so some of the locations that you can visit in asking for troubles are you can go to the paradise space and this is where you will be getting trouble cards you'll see that you have to trade in a number of resources to pick up the cards whether it's carrots or box or whatever the fuck is on the card and you will get a number of points for grabbing the card right you can if you want to go to the star orange and you could chuck the trouble into that star to get a certain amount of credits right credits are very useful for buying stuff right no shit sherlock so there's various types of resources you can collect you can go to the planet pommy to get carrots you can go to Tyson Comet to get crystals. You can go to the Nye Asteroid Belt to get ore. And when you go to the Smashed Rock, you get two credits and you can take a Riff Raff card. Riff Raff cards are like characters that you may or may not place on a board. And these give you a special ability. So you can go to the Orange Station. This is where you'll be able to get upgrades for your ship. You'll be able to get up to three different connections that you're going to be placing around your little shipboard, yeah? And these cost two credits plus one credit extra for each of these attachments that you've already got on that spot. And the way this works is, is when you visit the location that these connections are attached to, then you get a bonus that's on the little connection tile, yeah? So you go to the mega factory to get traps, yeah? Or you could pay a little bit extra and get a fucking mega trap, yeah? Love my fucking mega traps. You go to Paradise Moon to get some slugs. You can go to the merchant to get some boxes. Or you can go to the wormhole and lob a trouble in, like we said earlier, and you can basically be a complete heartless cold bastard to get some credits yeah so in the tribal's deck there are city cards that will come out and you'll be able to claim these and these will give you victory points during end game scoring the end game comes when all of the city cards are revealed and the player with the most points will be the winner of asking for tro bills so what do we like but asking for tro bills so the first thing that we really like about this is that the turns fly by quicker than me needing a piss after downing two points of Stella. This game plays up to seven players, right? And it makes virtually no difference to the amount of downtime that is in this game because you're just going to be placing a ship and taking the action or maybe taking a ship off the board, right? And that takes a matter of seconds. And if you're playing with a higher player count, this is sort of advantageous as well because you've got that little bit of extra time to plan what you're going to do on your next turn, right? So if you lot at the back are you to a 10 second wank then this game is right up your alley so the second thing that we really like about asking for troubles is the rules are so simple that a village idiot could use the rule book as blueprints for the Taj Mahal I mean I'll just explain this game to you in what I don't know how many minutes it was two three four five minutes I don't know and there is nobody that I have played this with that has even asked any questions about the rules yes if you're looking for a worker placement game that was built from the ground up for absolute fucktards then this is going to be the game for you so so the final thing that we like about asking for troubles is the upgrade system actually speeds the game up towards the end right because where you're going to be getting extra resources from your upgrades every time you go to a location you're going to be grabbing even more shit that you're going to be able to turn in for even more shit so for a game that is as quick and as fast as this when you've got a baked in mechanism that speeds the game up even more you're going to feel like you've been hit around the head with a lead lined cauliflower you know what i mean probably don't do you 
so we don't rely, but ask her for tro bills. So the first thing that we don't like about this is that the colour scheme absolutely sucks, right? I hate orange at the best of times. Being afflicted with that ginger gene means that I've got this deep-rooted aversion to anything that resembles a Satsuma. And what makes this worse is that the game that we got is a second edition, and the original first edition allegedly looks even worse than this one. I mean, it looks like someone's eating a Domino's pizza and stuck their fingers down their throat, right? It's that disgusting. So don't expect a carbon copy of the Mona Lisa here. All you're going to get is something that resembles pavement pizza. So the second thing that we don't like about asking for troubles is that the standees in this game can hide valuable information on the board, right? When you've got a big massive bunch of standees floating around the board and you've got seven players, for instance, they're going to be looking around going, well, what's behind that standee? So you've got to move it. And then the next person is going to be, well, can you move it the other way, please? Because it's getting in my fucking way. And if you're sitting at a certain angle, all you're going to see is this cardboard slit. Don't you even fucking dare. If you add to this, that sometimes in these games, there can be, a huge plethora of standees to keep track of. Some people might have free cards and if you're playing with a lot of players you're going to have to keep track of the effects of all of the standees on a given turn right so can cause a bit of confusion for what is a really simple game and uh, really the standees are just a little bit shit. So the final thing that we don't like about asking for trobills is that it can take a little longer than I would like here. Yeah? I know you're going to be thinking well, hang on a minute said so that the rounds pass really really quickly and they do yeah it's just that the actual game itself can take a while to reach a resolution, right? It might have been better had there been less city cards in the deck. And I suppose you can just take them out, right? But I don't know if that unbalances the game somewhat. I'm not entirely sure. But it can drag on. And there's only so much put your worker on the board, take a worker off that I can handle, yeah? So to summarise, is asking for trobills worth your time and bother today and in the future? So we're going to say maybe, maybe not. This is a stripped down bare bones worker placement experience, right? It's not going to win any awards. Well, maybe it has won some awards. I don't know. Let's have a look. Has it won any awards? I don't think. Oh, it won the Dice Tower Family Game of the Year Award in 2015. Fucking Tom Vassell for you, isn't it? But even though it's completely unoriginal, it's still fun nevertheless. I think this is down to the fact that the game turns go by really, really quickly. Yeah, you haven't got time to even think that this is boring. I just wish that it didn't look like a complete pile of dog shit and it wasn't as long it could do with being maybe one city card less in length but if you are completely and utterly thick as shit like me and sometimes on occasion you just can't be fucking bothered to learn a complex and in-depth game then asking for trobles might just be the thing that tickles your ball bag today so there you go that's asking for trobles remember if you know it, then please consider subscribing to this channel hit a lot of button on all that youtube bullshit we'll see you next time